on behalf of Ahmedabad Management Association, I welcome Dr. Nandita Ben Shah and all of you. Today she is going to deliver her speech on Map Wellness, Your Habit. It is a very good subject and nowadays we all are very much health conscious. So I think we will be able to know so many new things, so many new ideas from her. I am giving her very brief introduction. Dr. Nandita Ben Shah is a medical doctor. She believes each of us can be our best doctor at any point of time. For the past 11 years, she has presented so many workshops, Peace versus Pills, not in India, but all over the world. And more than 5,000 participants inspiring others to make dietary and lifestyle changes, resulting in positive health and positive thinking. She also conduct a specific health program on reversing diabetes and reversing heart disease. She is the founder, mem uh, founder of Sharan, an organization devoted to disease reversal through food. For her, mind and body connection has always been an integrated part of the work. With her work in health and nutrition, she has seen many participants make changes that have enabled them to reach their highness potential, not just in their physical health, but mainly in their emotional, spiritual and mentally health. Once again, I all request you welcome her. Now on behalf of Ahmedabad Management Association, I request our very senior member, Bhushbhai Vyas, to offer bouquet. बदन एकास विनंती के मोबाइल स्विच ऑफ कर ही दिए। शुरुआत में एक कलक बेन लेक्चर आपसे, त्यार पची क्वेश्चनरी सेशन माटे इट विल बी ओपन। थैंक यू वेरी मच। it's really wonderful to see so many of you here. Um, how many of you know a little bit about what I'm doing? Please put up your hands. Oh, that's wonderful. And how many of you are already practicing it to some extent? Please put up your hands. Okay, great. And how many of you who are practicing have found results? Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you all for coming then. So I just want to let you know a little bit about myself. In 1997, I suffered a very severe disease. It was a complete body paralysis. You know, before that, I was very busy. I, I was from Bombay, and Bombay is kind of busier than Ahmedabad, and more polluted, and lots of things going on. And I was working all day in my practice, but then I was teaching all over the world. And I would come home at 8 o'clock and the phone would ring. And then one day I found that, you know, I was having difficulty squeezing a lime and I realized that I was losing control of my body and one day I was completely paralyzed, so paralyzed that I could not even turn in the bed. Now being a doctor, I knew my diagnosis and I knew that it was Gia Barre syndrome, which is an autoimmune disorder. But nevertheless, it was quite frightening. And my friends who are doctors really suggested that I should go to a hospital, get admitted, because the paralysis doesn't only affect the limbs, but it also in affects the internal organs. So it affects your breathing and your thinking 
and so much more. But I knew that our body is not silly and if it produces symptoms it's always for our own well-being and so I started thinking that I, I, I didn't go to hospital, I didn't want to take immunoglobulins or steroids which is what the hospitals give and I wanted to see how I could harness my body's healing power. Actually I believe that disease is a path to personal growth. It took me more than six months to be able to walk with a stick and almost a year before I could get back to walking completely. But what I do know today is that I know how to help people reverse autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases are like type 1 diabetes, multiple sclerosis or even um, um, some muscular dystrophies etc. A multiple sclerosis, the, um, I was just thinking of one, rheumatoid arthritis, these are the very common ones. And these people who doctors say cannot be helped at all can actually be helped by making correct changes. So I decided that my goal would be, my personal goal would be to help people harness their healing power to reach their highest health potential. And I reduced my practice in all other ways and started helping people reverse diseases only through food. So today is going to be an introduction. I will share with you a little bit about what I do. I do one day full seminars where everything is taught so that people can actually start getting into a way that they can reverse diseases. And I also conduct a 21 day residential program where we do all the labs reports at the beginning and all the lab reports at the end and throughout the program we help people get better and better by changing their diet and lifestyle and by reducing medications. So often people who are on 16 medicines when they come in within 21 days would go out on only four and yet have their lab reports much better than when they came in. So the goal is actually to he harness the healing power of the body so that we don't need medicines anymore. And I will just give today a brief introduction on the main causes of disease. So today we have a lot of rise in diseases. We have diabetes and hypertension and heart disease. Actually when I became a doctor, 5% of adult population in India had diabetes. Today it's 35%. That's a huge change. And same with many other diseases like hypertension and heart disease and thyroid. When I became a doctor, few people had thyroid, but today, have you seen that it's left, right and center? And we'll be discussing the causes of thyroid as well. And polycystic ovarian disease, we see that this is very common as well. And infertility, you know, India, the main problem in India was over fertility. But today we see lines outside fertility clinics. Isn't that strange? And then kidney failure, dialysis and kidney failure have become so common and autoimmune diseases that I already spoke about. All of these can be reversed just by making lifestyle changes. In fact, from the time that I became a doctor to today, the main thing that has changed is our lifestyle. And today we have dementia and Alzheimer's and so many things that make people lose their functions, not live a normal life. And to me, you know, having been through this illness, I really believe that when you're sick, it's not even worth living. You know, this, it's, you're not able to do so many things. 
but if you can change that and be in perfect health, wouldn't that be wonderful? So I want to show you a video of one of my earliest patients. Now this isn't the earliest but of course all the patients you don't have videos. So this was a lady in 2005, a kindergarten school teacher who had had heart disease for three years. And when she came to me, she came out of the ICU, three weeks in ICU with a prescription one page long. Have you seen those prescriptions? that doctors give when people come out of hospitals. So she had one of those prescriptions and she said, I don't want to take all these medicines, how can you help me? So I gave her a book called um, Reversing Heart Disease by Dean Ornish and I told her everything about diet. This lady for three years she couldn't even get up in the morning because she was so exhausted and being a kindergarten school teacher you can imagine how exhausting it is. Right? But I'm going to show you a video two and a half months after changing her diet. Just two and a half months and she started going for walks in the morning at four o'clock. Many of us can't even wake up at four. And going to the gym for 45 minutes in the evening every day. You will see how much she improved and she talks about her weight going down and yet she's eating better than ever before. So let's watch this video. My weight has gone down <coughs> because of that, this diet and I walk every morning for 50 minutes and I exercise for 45 minutes and I feel good. I feel very good. Mm -hmm. I have a very active program in school. I do everything. Mm -hmm. I was really a mess when I came to you. I was, I was very tired, remember? I think the most important probably is that I stopped the tea and the coffee. Mm -hmm. I think that was giving me very false mm -hmm. signals. Mm -hmm. I, th I think because I'm a tremendous tea and coffee lover. Mm -hmm. Not tea so much as coffee. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that is a very important change in my life. I think I never used to eat and I never felt hungry. Now I have a much more normal life, really. And now I feel I'm really out of it and my medication is very little, I mean. So I don't think I have a problem. Mm -hmm. So it's like now I, I feel more relaxed about what I have to do. I think before I was more uh, pressured about, you know, especially when I used to get into the, you know, like the last three or four years when I was very tired and I had to go to school and I had to do, it was a terrible strain on me. I mean, you can't believe what a strain it was. I couldn't even get out of the bed in the mornings. So you can imagine what a difficult situation she was in, but now how much better she is and how long did this last? This is a photograph from 2013, eight years later, I had to catch her running on the marina of Pondicherry. Isn't that amazing? And she never came back to my clinic because she didn't need me until last year. Last year she had some digestive problems and she came to visit me. And can you imagine, she came in shorts and she said, right after this I'm going running. Now she is 80. So someone with heart disease, completely free of heart disease, don't you think that's amazing? Now I want to show you another patient, this is a diabetic, 16 year diabetic, he came to our 21 day program, 21 days is even shorter than two and a half months and he was free of medicine in just three weeks. So I want you to see this video. I have had diabetes for 15 years and I had a reasonably high cholesterol level as well. I was overweight and I was on three medications for diabetes so I've been taking them for a very long time. In the middle of the first week after three days or so as we looked at the sugar values uh, Dr. Nandita Shindar said let's get rid of one medication and after two days we got rid of the second one. The second week, 
the progress was still pretty good so we decided to get rid of that as well so for the last uh, 12 days or so uh, or 10 days or so uh, I am on no medication and I have lost 5 kg in the last 18 days uh, so in fact um, you know the last hole in my belt you know was not enough now to hold my pants up so we had to get the sixth hole drilled by the hotel staff here so now I can wear my pants uh, without fearing it falling off. As I prepare for my retirement in few years is that if I'm not healthy, you know, it's not going to be a good life. And it was a big motivation for me to get on this path of health. So this is really magical in my mind uh, to be able to do that so quickly and have a lifestyle and the diet um, intervention and the program that we can implement for the rest of the life. So I'm very positive. Uh, seeing what I've seen, seeing what I've seen all the other people, what I've read about people who've gone on this, that this will work and, uh, and this already is working and this will be a very sustainable thing. Now these people lost weight not by dieting. We only serve buffets. We never tell them how much to eat or what to eat. And uh, one important thing about Sharon is that the food must be delicious. Food not delicious, is it going to be sustainable? Are you all foodies? So if the food isn't delicious, will it be sustainable? Right? So our one most important thing is the food must be delicious. In our 21 day program, we have cooking classes every day so that people become even better cooks and even bigger foodies when they leave than when they came. So today we are going to talk about the five most important causes of change from a healthy life to a diseased life. Why are we all diseased today? And I am going to start from the so five most important, right? But I'm going to start from the least important and go to the most important. Now, if we all knew about this, would we be sick? No, right? But are you, aren't you all trying to be healthy anyway? So I just want to say that what I might be speaking about today could be a little different than you imagine. It may be even hard to believe initially, a little bit shocking. But here's what I promise you, like in our 21 day program, if you make changes that we recommend, 100% guarantee that diseases can be reversed. Not all diseases, of course all diseases are not reversible, but 95% of the diseases that we face today, including cases of cancer, and that doesn't mean large stages of cancer. But including cases of cancer can be reversed by our body's healing power. So we're going to start with number five. That means we're going from the least important to the most important. Number five is vitamin deficiency. Today most of us are vitamin deficient. And we often try to overcome this by taking multivitamins. But does anyone get healthier by taking multivitamins? Let's be honest, right? It's only the pharmaceutical company's bank balance that gets healthier. So, so let us see how we can get the most nutrients. You know, nutrients are units of healing. Without nutrients, we cannot heal. How to get the maximum nutrition from your food? Today we are eating foods which are, which are deficient in nutrients because we are eating non-organic food. Have you ever heard people say ke pilla na jamana jam ave khawa nu nathi maltu? Taste nathi auto. It's not as tasty as it used to be the food today. And that's because it's not as nutritious. Nutrition and palatability go hand in hand. But today because we are eating non-organic food, chemically grown food, we don't get enough nutrients. And then we try to overcome this by taking multivitamin supplements. But this is not what nature intended. 
nature intended us to get a multitude of vitamins in a certain proportion. When we take multivitamin tablets, sometimes they are 200 times the RDA, 500 times the RDA. RDA means recommended daily allowance. Now, if we take so much uh, vitamin, it's only a load on our liver and kidneys to flush it out. But it doesn't serve a purpose. You know, um, also there's, there's a huge difference between single ingredients and whole. For example, they found that people who ate a lot of carrots were getting less cancer. So they made a special nutrient, carotene. If someone has cancer, you can have carotene. But if you have carotene, it actually propels the cancer. So there is a difference between a carrot and just carotene. Therefore, we don't want to have nutrients just as supplements. And today we have a huge problem of vitamin B12 deficiency and vitamin D deficiency and these two must be supplemented. Vitamin D deficiency comes because vitamin D comes from the sun and we are living in a country where we always have sun but we are living in cities and we don't like to expose ourselves to sun. We don't want to get darker. We are wearing clothes. And the sun has to hit our skin directly, not through the windows, not through the sunscreens and not even through the smog. Now in all the cities we have smog too. So it becomes difficult for us to get vitamin D. So I, we always advise checking of vitamin B12 and D and if they are low, supplement them. Has anyone here checked their vitamin B12 and D? Please put up your hands. Okay, great. So that's good. And those of you who haven't, it's really worth checking it out. And those of you who have, how many of you found one or two of them low? Please put up your hands. So the others, you can see that, you know, often this is a problem. So we really need to get this checked. Then number four, stress. Have you ever been stressed? Okay, okay, so we've got to work on stress, right? Because stress causes diabetes. Many people go through a severe stress and they end up with diabetes. People go through severe stress and they end up with heart disease or hypertension. We all know that stress causes disease. But why does stress cause disease and what is the cause of stress? Right, right from childhood. Who, who causes these baby stress? Parents. Parents do and we'll talk about how. But the main cause of stress is what we don't learn in school and also what we learn. Like we are made to learn geography and history and algebra and geometry and honestly how many of us use this? But what we don't learn is how to cook delicious food. So we end up going to restaurants every day or eating on the road and getting sick, right? What we don't learn is how to handle relationships. So we are having relationship problems all the time. Our culture, don't you think that we are stressed because of our culture, because of expectations of our society? If somebody does this, if somebody is in hospital, everybody should go. Of course, now Ahmedabad has hospitals which are like five-star hotels where it's even a pleasure to go. But, you know, or if uh, there's a wedding, every man must go. So we are always doing what society expects us to do. And we don't think about what do we really want to do. What are we here in this world for? What is our spiritual purpose to be on this planet? We stress a lot on pleasure instead of happiness. Pleasure means going out for dinner, going to a wedding, buying new clothes, going on a holiday. Happiness, you don't have to do anything. It's a state of being. But most of us don't learn how to be happy. And our food. Now, you saw the video of the 
70 year old woman who got better with her heart disease and she said I feel less pressured did you hear that I feel less pressured so how did she feel better in her stress by changing her diet let us see do you remember she said that I stopped the tea and the coffee you know have you noticed that usually we don't give our children tea and coffee our children are often less stressed than we are our children have more energy than we have but we take tea and coffee for energy right so we can change things by understanding we all know that tea and coffee is not good for you because that's why we don't give it to our kids so how can we start looking at the way we live a little different now there's a shift in the food that we ate and what we eat today in the past all our food was organic in fact there was no word like organic and there shouldn't be organic food is what God made what nature makes today we should label everything we buy in the stores as chemical food and organic shouldn't have a name but instead we go to the stores and buy normal food and if we want to buy special food that doesn't cause disease we go to the organic store we used to eat whole foods everything was not made of maida it was made of atta you know instead of having sugar we were having jaggery or more uh, whole foods we were having fresh foods you know there were no supermarkets with 10 aisles of boxed ingredients that are not even fresh and that can stay on your shelves for months and years without spoiling real food spoils but these supermarkets have only one aisle of real food and plenty of aisles of non food do you have that in Ahmedabad too okay and then we used to eat a lot more plant based foods we were more vegetarian and we used to eat a lot more natural foods now it's changed today instead of organic foods we're having chemical foods instead of whole we're eating refined foods for example we wake up in the morning and have tea and coffee with biscuits does anyone do that here so what is biscuits made of oil or fat sugar maida and milk powder what is there in that yet it's a staple and we start our day with the very worst food for us right and instead of fresh foods we're eating processed foods all those packaged foods and instead of plant foods we're eating more and more animal foods there's more even if we're vegetarian we're having more paneer and more cheese and by the way one ounce of cheese is equal to 16 ounces of milk one ounce of paneer is equal to 12 ounces of milk and we're having milk sweets all the time and instead of having natural foods we're having more and more artificial foods isn't this true now I want you to imagine just look at this list and read it read it to yourself and see how do you feel in your body when you read this how do you feel when you read this and see this picture or imagine any other food that we normally eat today how does it feel now I want you to see how do you feel when you read this read it in your mind and just see what does it feel like what does it feel like when you see the picture of this real food can you see the difference can you feel the difference did your body tell you something what did your body tell you can you feel more stress here than here can you feel a difference in your body isn't it interesting how intuitively we know what is better for us 
if you see something like this, it looks inviting. If you see something like this, which is what we are eating more and more of, it doesn't look exciting, it looks stressful. Can you feel the stress of these crowded animals living there their entire lives? I want to show you a video about factory farming. The unbridled quest for economic efficiency has led here to filthy, overcrowded, industrialized farms that threaten our health, pollute our environment, and subject billions of animals to intolerable cruelty. Each is a sentient being endowed with awareness and feeling. To agribusiness, they are mere commodities, raw materials on an assembly line. Their suffering is immense, unrelenting, and largely hidden. Now, nowadays you might have seen in Ahmedabad we are eating more chicken than before, right? And sometimes I ask people, do you know which is the sickest animal on the planet? And it's the broiler chicken. The broiler chicken is made to grow to full size in just six weeks so that it can go for slaughter. A real hen grows to full size in 12 weeks. Now these are not broiler chickens, these are egg laying chickens. They are being separated from the time they are born into male and female. The males are crushed up and fed to their sisters. The females beaks and their toes are cut off so that they can be put in these cages and made to lay 250 eggs a year. Instead of 25, they are made to lay 250 eggs a year. For their short life, because after one or one and a half years, they are so um, destroyed that if you just pick them up, their bones break. They are that fragile and they go to make chicken soup. This is their entire life. And this stress comes back to us. When we are stressed, we produce adrenaline. Have you heard of adrenaline? When animals are stressed, they produce adrenaline. If we eat chicken, we are eating adrenaline. If we consume milk, we are consuming adrenaline. Because what is milk? Milk is the food that every mammal makes for its young. And no mammal on the planet drinks another mammal's milk. Except we do. Not even a calf drinks its mother's milk when it grows up. But in order that we can drink milk, cows are artificially inseminated when they are two years old so that they will get pregnant, so that they will give milk. Their babies are taken away from them as soon as they are born, within two days or few days. Which means that actually even the colostrum, the first milk of the cow is sold as a delicacy. And you may have heard of this here, right? So can you imagine the grief and the stress of the mother whose baby has been taken away from her as soon as it's born? And the grief and the stress and the stress of the mother who is artificially inseminated within, uh, within two months of delivery so that she'll keep the milk flowing. This stress comes back to us. So I want to show you some videos of cows because we often forget that cows are amazing sentient animals just like us.
amazing that we don't see this side of them and we can't see this side of them as long as we are justifying the exploitation of them. I want to show you a beautiful video about chickens too. amazing thing about animals, they know how to heal themselves and we don't. There are no hospitals for animals or at least not as large as the ones for human beings. We are making ourselves sick and we can learn so much from them. That's why Sharan stands for sanctuary for health and reconnection to animals and nature. Because if we can reconnect to animals, if we can learn from animals, we'll be less sick. So we talked about two things up to now. We've talked about vitamins, we've talked about stress, and we talked about how eating animal products cause stress as well, and how changing our diet can reduce our stress levels. Is there anyone here who's changed their diet, stopped all animal products, and found stress reduced Anybody here who's experienced this? Okay, so few hands up. Please put up your hands so the others can see. Okay, so there are people who've done it and experienced it here. Hmm? Now the third thing is chemicals. Today we have a lot of hormonal problems. Diabetes is a hormonal problem. Insulin is a hormone or thyroid or polycystic ovarian or honestly even breast cancer and prostate cancer are hormone dependent cancers. And chemicals are hormone disruptors. And we have nowadays chemicals all over the place, everywhere in our house. We also have chemicals on our food. Pesticides are poisons. Pesticides are sprayed on food so that insects and animals won't eat it and then we eat it. Isn't that amazing? And fertilizers are like vitamins. You can add them to the soil but it doesn't make people more, it doesn't make the plants more healthy. In fact, they are lower in nutrients when you use fertilizers. And then we use all kinds of personal care products from deodorants and toothpaste and shampoos and soaps and creams and you know, and if we were to look at the ingredients of them, we may never even put it on our body, but we don't realize that our skin, things can actually be absorbed from our skin. So what we put on our skin is going into our body. And then there are all the household chemicals, the detergents and the, um, you know, I'm staying in a hotel here in Ahmedabad. And when I went into the hotel, there was this automatic spray of air freshener so that all the fresh air is now filled with chemicals. And I had to go to my room and say, please come and open the windows because I can't stand this. And they had to send a special person to open the windows so that I could turn off the air conditioner because there's chemical coming from the air conditioner every second of the time. You know, these chemicals cause polycystic ovarian, hypothyroid, and we are suffering from all these diseases today. And environmental chemicals, which we can't do much of, you know, there's the pollution from the 
exhaust fumes from the cars or the factories. So chemicals is a third and then number two. Now remember we are getting to the more important causes and as we get to the more important causes it is harder to believe. Most people believe that medicines are good for you. But tell me, do you know any person who has got cured of his disease with medicines? I mean, I see people with diabetes who go to a doctor and get medicines and they know that up to now nobody has been cured with these medicines. I am not saying that medicines are never required. Sometimes they are. But most of the medicines that we take prevent our body from healing. Our body is designed to heal. The reason I got the Guillain-Barre syndrome was because I had to learn lessons from that on how we can heal our body ourselves. But medicines never cure. Even when we have an infection and we take antibiotics, the antibiotics may kill the bacteria. Do they raise our immune system? Do they create better immunity in us? I've seen people who get throat infections and they take antibiotics and then they get the throat infection the next month and take antibiotics again. And so they are actually taking antibiotics almost every month, which means antibiotics don't cure. But we don't think about it this way. So it doesn't mean that we don't ever need medicines. Medicines can be helpful, but we should be a little more careful when we take medicines all the time. For example, when we get a headache, it's our body talking to us. Our body is telling us something. When I got Guillain-Barre, it was like I cannot move. What was my body telling me? You're working too hard. I am putting you into stop and it actually changed my life because it forced me to move from Bombay where I couldn't stop having so many patients. It forced me to move from Bombay to a village called Oroville where I live now and this changed my life completely. 